Hello everyone, this is Anne from Odul Sina Scrap. So tonight I want to create a little, um, I don't know, stack of papers, scrap pieces of papers. Put them all together and tie them together with a brad. And these will be really useful for decorating a journal. So I, I want to play with my new kit that I've created recently and it's in my Etsy shop and it's all French documents. So I've been printing a lot of them to do the digital kit and then that gave me a lot of scrap pieces. So with a little, with those Tim Holtz um, clips, paper clips. Like you can just come and just tuckle your pieces on a paper and it kind of decorate the page. It holds together but you can easily remove it. And a little bit of lace, a picture, postcard, scrap pieces of papers where you can do some journaling at the back. I just find it's it's so easy to do layers with those kind of um, of pieces of scraps together all tied together with the brad and it's wonderful in a journal like to decorate the pages. So I want to play a little bit and create some. So I've already created a couple with my scrap pieces. So wallpaper, always a little bit of lace and scrap pieces. Like you see a little bit of lace. I've created some with the brad on the left, the brad on the right. So depending on the page, I can put them on the left or the right of a page. Um, 3D embossed paper. You want to play with different uh, style of paper and some vellum, some wallpaper, all that kind of stuff. I want to show you this one. This is part of my new French kit uh, because it's all in French. Everything is in French. In my new French kit there's an ephemera pack and there is a document pack and part of the document pack, you have this front of a notary. It's a, it's a sale. So Vaunt, it's a sale. And it's from 1881. And you have all the pages to reproduce the document within the, the kit. And they are just gorgeous. So what I've done is I've printed this cover page on a coffee stain paper. So that's why it's already yellowish there. It looks fragile. It, it looks already old. And these, I printed them on the, um, the paper, the continuous paper uh, that you can buy for the old printers where it has dots all the sides that you have to to tear and remove. It is really thin paper and it makes crunchy noise. I love that paper. And then I just attached it. I poked two holes and I attached it with just a little tread. And honestly, this is awesome. I love it. So if you can't afford or don't have ways to buy vintage and antique documents like that, you can kind of reproduce it. You just need a little bit of an imagination to kind of print on the right paper, damage it a little bit, you know, I've been folding the corners and um, yeah, you can reproduce that. Um, part of the, the ephemera kit, I have tons of papers. There's in the beige tone, in the greenish tones, in the bluish tones, 
there's some in the pink tone. It's all written down in French on them. So that's it for that. And I've been using my ruler to tear the paper most of the time so my edges are not straight like if I was using a pair of scissors. So in case you are new to my channel, when you want to tear, if you want to have a really damaged side like this here, where you see a little bit the pulp of the paper, compared to this side where it's more clean, this is like if you're right-ended like me, if I put my ruler on the left and I tear from the right, it will give some pulp of the paper there. But if I do the opposite, I put the ruler on the left and I tear from the right like this, this creates a more straight edge. But even compared to scissors, it's already a little bit less um, clean cut, I would say. So depending on the style you want your tearing with the ruler, you're gonna decide if you put the ruler on the left and tear from the right, or put the ruler on the right and tear from the left. This is a trick you might want to know. So I've been tearing down a lot of paper this afternoon to get kind of a stash. And then we have, I'm gonna use my leftovers from documents, um, the documents ephemera kit that I've printed um, on vellum paper on newspaper, newsprint paper, sorry. I love that, it's kind of a grayish, old, like a newspaper actually. Um, I've been printing on regular paper as well. It's just my scrap pieces that I, I didn't use, but I've tested on. So, how do we start? I can maybe just tear like that. I tend to, when I want to do a straight line, I give myself enough space here when I can and I just tear with my fingers pressing on the paper and tearing flat. When I tear with my right hand, I tear going down, not up or on the side. I just tear going down kind of flat. Okay, I was talking and I missed that one, but anyway, you see the point. And I'm gonna do the same here. I'm gonna tear, see? It is not straight, but it's a little bit more controllable, I would say. Okay, so I'll do those three, because we want to work in batches, so we don't want to overthink the process. And we want, when I don't have enough, I just tear like that and I try to control. Okay, so we don't want to overthink the process, but we want to create in batches. So I have three papers, I'm gonna use the three papers. Maybe I'll just keep the straight line at the top. Here, I don't like a big wave like that, so I'm gonna remove a little part. What about this one? Yeah, this will be the down. So I'm going to tear a little bit here and this, I love this here, so I can leave it like that. Okay, so now I need a contrasting color, contrasting style. So maybe I can go with a little colored paper. So what I'm going to do... they're too long so I'm gonna tear it and keep it for two or three projects so let's see, I'm gonna follow that this will be a part for something and this could be if I fold it into two this could be part of uh, 
like that and maybe here you go like that now maybe i can use one of those is it too big it is big i'll keep it for another one. Oh, oh it's the same yeah okay i'm gonna go with my papers now what about this here so I'm going to remove the side and now I want something between this size and this size so I can go oh maybe that would be great no I'll go this side because the writing is on that side so this writing will be on that side and this one like that let's see so I'm gonna go like this and I'm gonna do both the newspaper newsprint paper is tearing really well I can tell you I'll put uh, links in the description of the video uh, for the Amazon link because honestly I struggled a lot to find them I don't know why eh? but I didn't know what I was searching for and I finally found some so if you don't want to lose an hour of your time you can just follow the link that I'm gonna provide you and just get it get the paper I did the search for you okay this one will be smaller I'm gonna maybe take another paper we want to aim for three four paper max so maybe like this I also released a new kit I guess it's been three weeks ago already but these are vintage ladies um, different format oh look at that you have some in colors a kits of mademoiselle mademoiselle means mrs so you have mrs and mademoiselle the way it's spelled is kind of different um, for the different kits but one is all in the yellowish beige tones kind of a black and white but beige and black and the other ones all have the um, vintage hats and they're in colors so I'm gonna use some here and in the kit you have different sizes as well so let's go I have those here and what I need to do now is to figure out how I want to place my paper for the brad to hold so let's say I can put the brad here and I'm gonna pick a little lace or something to embellish it so I have a little stash here and I'm not overthinking the process maybe you can go with just one or maybe two but not too much and then I can look where I would like to place it I'm gonna grab a little brad and I'll just get everything together there you go and look at that we have a little decoration for a page in a journal I'll do the same here so this one is small but it's gonna just be peeking out like that why not okay like this 
and I'll just find something that fits the style. Can go maybe with that, a little piece of that. Um, let me see my brads. And I go in like that. There you go. <laughs> Maybe that was not a good choice, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just trim this little part here. It's it was going a little bit too much on the lady. And there's a big gap here. We can leave it there or we could tear it and reduce it like that. Here you go. We have another one done. What about this one now? And I did them all for the right side, but I could, I could change a little bit. I'll do here. This time I'll go here and maybe just this. Yeah, this looks good. So a little brad, maybe more like that. Like I've put the brad more at the right, so it won't go too much on the ladies. Okay. Little brads like that are so useful. So we have another one here. Let's keep playing with that. I'm going to take this paper, which is the same, I think. No, it's, it's not the same. So, tearing like that. And sometimes I just add a real cut of scissors in the middle. Who cares? I'm going to go like that and I'm going to do four out of this one. So four because I'm going to cut like that. So they're going to be a little bit squarish. We need different format, don't forget. So there's never any problem with going too short, too small, too long, too large. Okay, these are my four. Maybe I can pick my picture first. Oh, I have an idea because it's squarish. I can use those hat ladies. I have bigger ones, so I'm going to use the bigger ones. See how it's easy when you have a stash already prepared. I love to work like that, having a stash and I just go with the flow like that. So maybe I can use these receipt. Yeah. And And I'll just tear it a little bit. I'll tear both sides. They're just a bit too long. Okay, this is good. 
I have this one that is smaller, so I can go like that. And there's a greenish here. I'm gonna do the same, reduce it. We would definitely not want to do that or we would try to avoid that if they were real vintage. But when it's a digital, you can print it over and over. So we don't care. So you have it in a greenish and a white. You have it in the pink, pink, blue. It's all the same, but the color changes. So you have all those choices in the kit. All right, let's try like that. And we have three now, maybe another one, just another one. This. Yeah, the size is good, so I'm gonna remove the sides. Okay, so that could be like that. See how it's easy working in batches? You, you can really, you don't overthink the process as much as, this, as if you're working individually. Like you just want to create one, for example. I'm gonna do those two because I have enough and I'm gonna find another paper for the other one. I can take, yeah, this is great. Maybe on that side. Yeah, it's better here like that. And then this little portion here that I want to kind of trim it a little bit more. And I'm gonna put the brad in the middle of that flower. What about that? Let's see. Just like that. Now I can trim a little bit more the tool here. And look at that. This is great. I love it. Okay, let me do this one too. So I guess when the lady looks on that side, we need to put the lace there. So here I should go this way. And for this one, the bread will be this side. Because if I place them like that, this looks good. So that could be something like that. And oh yeah. Oh yeah, I love that. Let me see where I should put this one. I, I want I want it to be solid, so maybe here. I'll start with the fabric. Oh, my paper is moved, so I'll just go one by one for the paper. Okay, and I can even leave it like this, that tool, or I can trim it. I'm gonna trim here for sure, because it's a bit too much, but I think I'm gonna leave it in front of the, the girl there. Look at that, so simple to do. Okay, 
So for this one, we're going to put the brad here. I think I'm going to tear this. like this like this and I'm missing one thing maybe one like that too so I'll just go fold this way because this side yeah this would be good and I'm gonna keep that for something else There you go. What about something like this and maybe something like this here. And then once it's placed, I can trim back if it's just too big. There you go. I could even add something else, let's say. Um, little piece like that that I have on my table hmm, that would be great too so if I change my mind like that I can just remove the brad try to not move my papers I'll just put the brad in one of the holes there and I'll try to go back. Here we go. Something like that. Isn't it cute? So easy to do. And this last one, because I think by now you got the process. I could I could just leave it like that too. And here maybe this one is so cute. Just a tiny bit here. And maybe I can put some tool that I have. just a tiny bit too, a little bit longer. So it's a bit too squarish though. I need to. Okay. What about something like this? And I would go, see, I, I really don't overthink the process. Oh, and this one is kind of a fake button. I have this in my stash for 15 years, I think. It's <laughs> when I was doing scrapbooking. Here you go. So we have that. So this is what I'm doing, but I don't want to create a too long um, video. So let's see, we want to place this one here. I would grab one of those little clip or a paper clip. And you just need to, to hold this ephemera to the page. And that's it. 
Thanks for watching. I hope it inspired some of you. See you in the next video. Bye bye.